Okay, I'm going to quickly go so, through some of the features with you. This right here, this is your SD4 um, input for guiding. This input is what this was supposed, is supposed to be hooked up to. It controls your motors. This is your power input, and you have a micro USB input. That's for using, that's for um, running it wired instead of through the Wi-Fi. The clutches are pretty smooth. Never really had an issue with them unless I had too much weight on it and then they won't stay put very well. I added this base to it, this adjuster here. Without it, polar alignment is impossible. Back here, there's a, there's a hole that goes through the scope that you're supposed to put Polaris into and someone once compared it to, it's like looking through a straw and that's pretty much it. You're not going to be able to pull or align this thing without having this adjuster here. I bought it on sale. It's originally $99.99, somewhere in that area. Um, it, it was around Christmas, so it was 10 bucks off, and then I have this coupon finder thing on my computer that gave me another 5 bucks off, so I got it for a pretty good price, and it was well worth it. If you're doing astrophotography, and that's why I'm using this, I'm not using it for a visual, you got to have it polar aligned. There's just no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Um, if you were going to use the Wi-Fi with it, and you'd have to use the Explorer Stars app, which I am not really fond of, and the reason being is because I'm not all that familiar with the sky. In all honesty, I, I can look at some of the stars now and tell you the names, but when I first started doing this, it wants you to do a two-star alignment, and you pick from a constellation chart, or it picks for you, it'll give you suggestions, and when it slews to that, you're supposed to, you know, slew it left, right, up, down, to try to center that star, but if you're on the wrong star, like I was, and hit sync, you're never going to get to the target you wanted. So I wanted it just to be easier for myself so I don't go through Wi-Fi, I don't use that app. Mine is wired and like I said, later I will get to how I did that. It's a good mount, it really is, but if you're going to do what I'm doing with it, there's a lot more that's involved. So that will come in later videos, but I just wanted to tell you and talk to you briefly about the features that it has. I can't compare this to other mounts that are out there. Is it, got, is it lacking um, features, or does it have some that others don't have? I assume it probably does. But at the price point, really, you can't really go wrong with this mount. When I bought it, it was $399. I, as of today, on 5420 it was 349 but that does not come with the upgraded battery pack I don't recommend using the battery pack either it doesn't give you any indication that the batteries are slowly dying so when you start running this thing and the batteries start dying your tracking is going to slow down and you're going to run into star trails and run into problems and they last maybe maybe four hours in colder temperatures a lot less so Another tip is to just get your get a power adapter, 12 volt power adapter, and you can get them pretty much anywhere. The one I got had different ends for it, so I knew which one to match up to this, and that was it. Got rid of the battery pack. All right, well that is about all I can really tell you about the features of this so far. If you have any questions, any comments, um, feel free to leave your suggestions and whatnot in comments down below. Um, Part three, I will start going over more or less the setup of it and how to get it to go wired. And I think this is where a lot of you, I'm hoping, will learn from my mistakes and get yourselves out there and using this thing quickly. So thanks for watching, and I will see you all next time. Thanks.